Alrighty guys, we are back with another motherboard unboxing and this time it's from the MSI side. We're taking a look at the Pro Z890 Dash S Wi-Fi PZ. Now PZ being Project Zero. Now if you're not familiar with their Project Zero line, that is their back connect ecosystem of boards. Now I don't think they have too many, I think maybe four or five boards. This is their latest one here, but I can tell you that there are a lot of case manufacturers moving towards the uh, back in that ecosystem. Nearly every case I've seen coming out, whether it's from the Enli, Fantex, Corsair, Cougar, um, all of them, Thermaltake, they're all supporting back connect, just not MSI. Everyone has their different name. Azus has the BTF, uh, Gigabyte, Aorus has the Stealth, MSI has the Project Zero. Now, I think they're the main ones that do it. I'm not sure if anyone else does it, but we've got this board here. This board is really affordable to me. I think it is 229 US dollars. That's not too bad, especially you're getting this kind of niche back connect uh, ecosystem on this board. So that's the back there. I do apologize if this is gonna be a bit overexposed because this board is very shiny. It's all silver. I actually reached out to MSI about this board. I've seen it for a little while now and I said, hey, I wanna do some different content on motherboards. I cover a lot of the Zeus ROG boards. I do wanna cover more boards than just them because I do like pretty much every board that's out there from Aorus, from MSI. So whoever's gonna support me, I will cover those boards for you guys and I'll also use them in builds as well. And that's another thing, I just don't wanna stick to one brand in all of my builds because people might be thinking, well, I favor a certain brand over others, but I always like different interesting boards. It doesn't have to be the highest of end boards. I'll just quickly unwrap this. So yeah, it doesn't always have to be the highest of end boards. I think for a lot of you guys out there, not everyone wants to spend a thousand plus on a board. People want to see what a lower end board can do, something like this, not just in terms of performance. Like performance for this is still going to be up there. It's the 1851 LGA socket. It can support like up to a 285K. You can throw a 5090 in this and this board will do a really good job. But not just performance, things like aesthetics, uh, the features, how many USB does it have, Thunderbolt, all of that, and how does it look in an actual system. But that's the board there. Let's see how well that is in frame. Now it is gonna be glary. If I angle it like this, you get a better look. Very clean looking, professional looking board. Around the back, you've got all those back connectors around there. No back plate, which I think is fine for this price range. But before we get rid of this packaging, I do like how MSI are doing these. I'm not sure if this is with all of their motherboards, but especially their Project Zero line. I did the build in their Z790, I think last year. That one looked pretty sweet for that build. No doubt I'll do a build with this one, but the packaging was the same on that one. It's just a single sleeve that goes over the top, and then you have the simple box, and then I just wanna take out the Wi-Fi because I'll cover that later, and then you just have a compartment in there with all of your accessories. Now, moving to the board itself. So yeah, MSI Z890 Dash S Wi-Fi PZ is the board. I can see this bit's a little bit exposed over here. Unfortunately, I can't really fix that too much. Just get a shot now so we can see how it actually looks with the aesthetics of it. Some lines there, some circles there, and then it's a very, I would say, boxy motherboard. As you can see, it's got this case that looks like it goes all the way around that covers all of this like that, and then up like that as well. But yeah, to me, clean looking board. Now I do appreciate how MSI have not gone with a black PCB. They also haven't gone with a white PCB. I say they've done this deliberately. It's not a, like an off-white gray we've seen on some boards, it's actually a very, I would say deep gray to try and match the aesthetic on this silver. If I go around the back, we might get a better look on this gray. So a lot of white boards I've covered before are normally like this kind of white. And then where you, when you match this up to actual white, this looks white here because this is gray, but when you match this white to a dead set white, it is always off and it doesn't quite look right. So I do think they made the right choice where they went gray with that. It just matches nicely with this board. So yeah, 229 for this, I think isn't too bad, especially with this back connect uh, ecosystem. The heat sinks aren't overly large, over the top. I'll cover VRM a little bit later on. Uh, some other features I normally like to get out, out of the way first, no debug LED, which I think is fine on a board in this price range. You do have your, uh, when I meant debug LED, the postcode with the two digits. This one has the uh, debug LED where you have the four LEDs. So you normally have the CPU one, the memory one, the VGA, and then the boot. So if it 
get stuck on one of those. I'm not sure on MSI, on other boards, the light goes from either green to red. If it's stuck on that, say it gets stuck on CPU, you may not have a CPU installed or you may need to reseed it. And same with memory and so on, which I think is pretty good as an indicator to tell you if your system is having issues before it actually posts. Now, power delivery, you're looking at 12 plus one plus one, nothing insane. I think that godlike is 26, 28, something crazy like that. Um, for a board for this, most users aren't going to need that. You can still throw in uh, Intel's top line CPU. You're not gonna be able to do crazy overclocking, but then again, I think someone using a board like this isn't going to buy this just for overclocking. Uh, you can see the heatsink set, not like a fin stack array, anything like that. And I wouldn't say this needs it, especially for a 12 phase VRAM. And you can just see the design there where it's been cut out for airflow to go through. As I said, LGA 1851, you can throw in something like a Core Ultra 285. Now, what's your thoughts on an AMD version? It seems to be all of these back connect boards are all coming out with Intel. I know Zeus has some AMD ones. I covered one a few weeks back and they have some more coming, but I think a push for AMD from some other brands, especially MSI would be sweet. I don't think they have one. I know Aorus do have some in AMD. So I think MSI might be actually the only ones left that aren't pushing the AMD because I know AMD is becoming much more popular these days where they stand with their CPUs. Memory, you're looking at four DIMM up to 256 gigabytes. Now that's up to 8,800 mega transfers and that supports CU DIMM as well. Now one thing I really want to look at is how this is going to look. First thing when I saw this board, I thought, well, silver's not always an easy color to match when you're doing a system, but I've got this Trident Z, uh, Z5. This is not Royale, this is just standard from them, but I think this is gonna match perfectly. So no doubt I'm going to probably have to use this memory. So 256 seems to be the standard now that you can get 64 uh, gig modules, times that by four, that gives you the 256. And that looks really, really nice there. Shame about that black strip on the side, um, but you're not really going to see that in most of the cases when it's looking like that, but that does look pretty sweet. Uh, moving down, to the PCIe layout. Now you might be wrong, you got one, two, three, four, sweet. I can put four full length cards in here. Well, technically, yes, you can. They're physically uh, 16 by slots, but they're not all electrically. So the first one is of course your gen five, that's your by 16. You got a 4090, 4080, 5090, 5080, throw it in there. You're gonna run a full 16, away you go. These other ones, one, two, three. The second one is a PCIe gen three. That supports uh, by one. So I can tell straight away, the pins actually only come to here and that's gonna be a by one. I also made sure of this all on the specs. I just don't go by the assumptions, but yeah, that is a by one. And then these two down here are gen four and these are by four as well. And I can see the pins go a little bit further as well. And you can always tell on the back as well, there's the by one and there's the two by fours. And then the gen five uses a different trace layout where you can't actually see the pins coming through, you can just see, it's like a surface mount design where you can't actually see the pins going all the way through. But yeah, 16, then by one, by four, by four. Now I can only assume that they made these full length uh, slots for, I think this board's for pro users. If you're using this for like workstation things, you can have a physical card, but you can still put it in this slot, but you will just be limited at the speed. Whereas if you only have a dedicated four by slot, you can't put a larger card in it. So that's what they've done for that. Uh, there's no lane sharing either. So if you put something in this one and this one, you're not gonna like lose this one or this one's gonna drop down. All of these are exactly those speeds, which I just mentioned, which is pretty good. Moving on to the M.2s, there are three. No fancy uh, quick release, uh, anything like that. One thing for, I didn't cover on the PCIe, the primary slot, they do have a quick, I wouldn't say it's a quick release. It's just an extra extended tab that when your video card is in, sometimes it's hard to reach this. There's an actual extended tab on the side for you to reach your finger and to release it. No fancy quick release off to the side, anything like that. Mind you, this is a pretty uh, affordable motherboard, so we're not gonna have anything like that. As for your M.2 covers, no fancy quick release for those either. Unlike on their Godlike, I think I've had one of their older versions. Every single cover you just pop off with clips and so on. Uh, this one doesn't have that, once again, it's going to affect the price and I don't think they really uh, needed to have that. So you got three under two, one, two, three. These all support up to 2280, that's it, nothing larger 
uh, but they will support your smaller size, physical size ones as well that are smaller than 2280. Uh, in terms of the speed, first one is PCIe Gen 5 and then the two below are PCIe Gen 4. Once again, there is no lane sharing, so you can pop, uh, populate one, two, three, and you won't lose one if you use like your primary card, your secondary card, you won't lose say this one or this one, anything like that. You can max these out and you can run these slots as according to what the specs say. And then we do have a bit of a M.2 uh, little lever here, so you don't have to use the screws, which is good. I'll just get a close up on that and you can see that in there and that's to undo that if we can get a shot on that just like that and it pops out and that's on all of the slots as well so i don't need to use those pesky old little screws i think they were like m 2.5 or something like that uh four side of six which is around here one two three four wouldn't expect anything really less on a board like this uh realtek 2.5 which is here there's no uh 10 or 5 gigabit once again this board is less than $250 and you are getting the sort of the exclusive back connect. Wi-Fi 7 is on this board. Now this is something that interesting that MSI came out with in uh, this latest motherboard launch. This one and I think the AMDs which came out towards the end of last year. They made a statement that all of their Wi-Fi 7 boards were going to support the 320 megahertz bandwidth channel. Now not a lot of brands are doing that. Normally their 500 plus tier boards only support the 320. Anything lower normally supports the 160. Now, if that's going to matter to you, that's kind of good because all of MSI boards are going to do that. Um, if it's going to affect you, that'll come down to what you're doing. That just means you can run up to the 5.8 gigabit transfer rate. That might not matter to you because Wi-Fi 7 is still pretty fast. But if you think that'll benefit you, then this board will definitely support that because as MSI said, all of their boards are going to support that faster uh, channel but in saying that you need to make sure your access point or router whichever you're connecting to is relatively new and is going to support is going to support that faster channel as well the wi-fi antennas also use the quick release which is good i think a lot of brands are doing this now no screwing in just pop that off pop that off and away you go and one other nice touch i do like is that they've kind of themed this the same as the board as well I'm not sure if they specifically did that but i know other brands have had a white board that just stick with their standard one color uh, antenna it's normally black and they throw it in with all of their boards whereas they've actually matched this i wouldn't say it's 100 perfect but hey it's pretty good uh to match this board not saying this really matters because you're not going to be sticking this anywhere near the board if anything it's going to be sticking on your case so being gray in the end may be a little bit odd because your case probably won't be gray either now for usb for the rear there's a total of eight here which is your one two for your type c and then the remaining six are the type a so for the type c we have a thunderbolt 4 which is good on a price board like this that'll do your 40 gigabit and that's the type c then we have a standard 20 gigabit type c and then the remaining six usb type a or your five gigabit one two three four five six now for the front which would normally be either along here or along here but being back connected it's on the back we have a total of one type c20 so that's for your usb-c front panel don't really need two i think unless it's a really high-end board a lot of cases don't have dual front usb type c on the front of cases you also have two usb here which are five gigabit type a they're your standard two type a on the front and then you have two more here for a total of four for usb 2.0 here so that's not too bad for those ports moving to the rest of the rear io around this way you have your audio ports, your mic in, line out, line in. You cover the antenna, the USB, the LAN. For display, we have HDMI and DisplayPort. Both will do 4K 60. For the HDMI, it's 2.1 and DisplayPort is 1.4. And then you also have the Thunderbolt as well. No clear CMOS on the rear, anything like that on this board. It is kind of, I would say, budget friendly. No doubt there will be the clear CMOS somewhere down the bottom for you to put the uh, little jumper on to clear that if you need to do that. But yeah, I think that's it on this board. Uh, you might be running why I'm doing a lot of motherboard unboxings lately. I think from now on, whenever I get a newish board come in that I think is gonna be re relevant to the channel, I'll probably cover it. Um, it doesn't take too much time to do a quick unboxing. I think it'd be good for you guys to see these boards. And it's also good for me if I ever need to bring up any content on a board I've covered 
whether it's in a build or anything like that, I've already got the video on it and I can relate to that board. Because once I normally use a board in a build, it may go off somewhere or I might not have easy access to take some footage on it. So it's handy for me to have that footage. But in saying that, I do have a lot of actual builds coming out. You might be running well. I haven't had a build on the channel for a while. I had the G-School one a little while ago, but I do have some coming from Leanne Lee. There's Corsair, there's also Trikes, and then I've also got a Lamborghini build as well. So I think now that Combitex is over, all of those brands are finally coming out with all their new cases. I'll be doing a heap of reviews, a heap of builds on all of those cases. So don't worry, there will be plenty of content for those custom builds coming up. But yeah, I just want to throw these motherboard unboxings in between those just to uh, get some more content on these boards and content for the channel as well. And I do believe MSI are sending me some of their ITX boards as well, which are coming up as well. So it'd be good to get more coverage on just the other boards I do, but more on MSI as well. But anyway, I wanna thank MSI for sending this board to check out. I wanna thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.